10 Least Powerful House of the Dragon Characters Heading Into Season 2 As House of the Dragon heads into its second season, there is a drastic power imbalance, with some characters standing out for their weakened positions. As Game of Thrones proved, no one is safe in George RR. Martin's universe, and House of the Dragon has proven to follow in its footsteps thus far. After just 10 episodes, the House of the Dragon Season 2 cast already has many differences from where things started, with several new characters joining the cast. Focusing on characters who've already been introduced in Season 1, the power struggle in Westeros favors some more than others. House of the Dragon Season 1's ending saw civil war between Targaryen factions in Westeros become inevitable. The inaction of King Viserys Targaryen, on top of various opportunists vying to raise their status, led to conflict, and Iman Targaryen murdering Renera Targaryen's son turned that conflict into a bloodbath. In Season 2, war will ravage Westeros, with the country split between the Black and Green factions, represented by Renera Targaryen and Aegon II Targaryen, respectively. Renis Targaryen, also known as the Queen Who Never Was, is a relatively powerful character out of the main cast, but she has some disadvantages that make her one of the least secure characters on her side. Starting with her positive attributes, Renis rides one of the most powerful dragons in House of the Dragon. Melius may not have battle experience like Caraxes or Viagar, but she's still a sizable threat and is known for being remarkably fast, which can be an advantage. Of course, Renis is also married to Corlys Velaryon, one of the country's most influential men. While these factors give Renis significant benefits that other characters don't possess, she has little power of her own. Renis's reputation as an almost queen has cast a shadow over her for much of her life, causing her to lack productive diplomatic relationships with those on either side. Essentially, Season 1 saw Renis playing all her cards as the acting ruler of House Velaryon in Corlys's absence. In Season 2, she'll primarily be a dragon rider asset for Renera, with few opportunities to demonstrate her own authority. Alicent Hightower is in a similar position to Renis Targaryen heading into Season 2, meaning they've both already made many of their available moves. On the one hand, she's been the Queen of Westeros for many years, the mother of King Aegon II, Emond, and the daughter of the King's Hand, Otto Hightower. Unfortunately for Alicent, her character isn't shaping out to be a Cersei Lannister-like manipulator and power player like many may have expected. First of all, she's struggled to control Aegon and Emond since they've grown up, and especially now that one is king and the other is a powerful warrior, it will be nearly impossible for her to influence them. Secondly, Alicent's sympathetic feelings toward Renera could cause division between her and her side, as she won't have the bloodlust or desire for vengeance as many of the Green Faction characters do. Lastly, a book moment teased in the House of the Dragon Season 2 trailers will put Alicent in one of her most vulnerable states yet. As opposed to Kristen Cole, who's taken advantage of his immediate situation and will be a powerful asset during the war, Larry Strong is playing a longer game to establish himself. Season 1 already saw him kill his father and older brother, making him the head of his house and a valuable asset to the Green Faction. As seen by characters like Lit Leafinger in Game of Thrones, schemers can thrive during wartime chaos. But Larry's isn't Lit Leafinger, he possesses way fewer resources and isn't as adept in his schemes and manipulations. In Season 2, Larry Strong can continue to make moves from the shadows, benefiting the Green Faction for as long as it benefits him. Larry's greatest ally is Alicent Hightower, and vice versa, and Season 2 should see him continuing to earn favor among the Greens. Once war breaks out, Larry's will quickly lose his lands to Daemon Targaryen, who makes the capture of Harrenyal an immediate objective. Future seasons could see Larry's in more optimal positions, but he's on the lower end for now.